also thank very much the organizers of the conference, especially for their heroic effort to keep our work going in a difficult times. Uh, I will speak about optical interrogation of neurons in the learning brain. Uh, the outline of my talk is presented on the next slide. <clears throat> I will speak about use of uh, optical technologies and optogenetics uh, in particular in studying the processes of learning in the brain at the cellular level. I will introduce the definition of engram cells and we'll discuss how it is possible to tag uh, these cells in the brain using expression of immediate early genes. I will uh, proceed then to optogenetic uh, techniques to do this and we'll discuss uh, two uh, types of research which we were doing in the laboratory using um, optogenetic uh, technologies, mainly imaging techniques. And uh, I will conclude with the uh, further directions to the unanswered questions of the cellular basis of learning and memory. So the basic assumption uh, which we use uh, in this approach is that brain learns and remembers by in its neurons. Neurons that support learning can be termed engram cells. This comes from the uh, term engram introduced uh, at the beginning of the 20th and psychiatrist Richard Salmon, and mostly revived in the, um, um, in the perspective of new optogenetic techniques by Susumo Tanegawa and his colleagues. Uh, they give the following definition of the engram cells. These cells are populations of neurons that are activated by learning have enduring cellular changes as a consequence of learning and whose reactivation by a part of the original stimuli delivered during learning results in memory recall. Uh, note that the last part of the definition goes beyond simply correlational definitions of the term and requires active interference in the activity of Sorry, uh, Professor Nohin. Uh, вы показываете нам и экранностью, а в том виде, в котором обычно смотрят для себя uh, представляющие. То есть у вас часть экрана и часть следующего слайда все в виде. Если бы вы могли переключиться в полный экран. Спасибо большое. У меня большое. есть. Я не Кстати, понимаю, вот, это, у вас это. Константин Владимирович, вам нужно просто вниз под вашим основным слайдом нажать на демонстрацию. Вот, вот есть э, тоже там еще. Секундочку, сейчас мы что-нибудь сделаем. Либо F5 нажать. А я нажал, и у меня она идет как раз. Понятно. Mm. А, попробуйте сейчас нажать на экран делаем. демонстрации, там должно быть... Mm -hmm. В разделе кладчика есть режим просто фильтр. Да, да. Сейчас все отлично. Угу. Все отлично, все пошло. Просто у меня было два экрана. Да. Uh, so... What are the questions which uh, are related to engram cells? Some of the basic questions are listed in this uh, table. So we uh, might ask, are all neurons in the brain capable of learning and encoding memory? And uh, though the 
general answer to this question is more or less clear that not all neurons are plastic, but the exact knowledge about this uh, is missing and requires experimental approaches. How learning and memory encoding is associated with excitatory and inhibitory neurons? Are all excitatory neurons uh, capable of learning and what specific types of excitatory neurons are involved in learning? And to what extent inhibitory neurons are plastic and are involved in learning? In different brain areas, let's say in cerebral cortex or hippocampus or amygdala. How learning in this uh, area areas and other areas uh, is uh, do neurons learn and encode memory both uh, when they are presynaptic and postsynaptic uh, to the synaptic plasticity event? And if yes, then uh, is there any difference in the time course of these uh, processes? Does it depend on the length of the axons? What kind of changes do we see in pre and postsynaptic? neurons. Also, should we discriminate between different forms of learning when addressing all these questions? Are these questions equal, for example, for operant learning and uh, classical conditioning for associative learning? The similar type of questions are related also to the process of memory retrieval. Since we know that uh, the plasticity uh, in neurons is observed also during processes of retrieval, we should ask, do neurons always learn during retrieval of memory? And if not, what are the conditions critical for uh, this plasticity? How this process is distributed among neurons that were involved in memory encoding comparable to new neurons during process of retrieval. Do the same type of neurons, by localization and cellular types, learn during encoding and retrieval? The data show that probably not, but we are missing the exact experimental uh, data. Do neurons encode memory during retrieval both also post suggesting that probably not, but again, we need more uh, experimental evidence. And also, uh, are uh, different forms of learning, as in case of encoding, are related uh, to all these questions during memory retrieval? We obviously need specific experimental tools to address these questions exactly. <laughs> One of the approaches is to use immediate early genes uh, as tags of engram cells. We have started uh, looking for this possibility uh, in 80s with the question, what are specific molecular processes that characterize memory encoding in the nerve cells? Uh, such type of events, we uh, discovered the involvement of a group of uh, genes called immediate early genes, which were initially found during uh, development in the uh, peripheral organs and uh, nervous system to be activated during acquisition of new experience in the adult brain. Furthermore, uh, it was shown that these uh, correlated with memory, but is required for memory since various types of interference, for example, antisense knockdown uh, approaches of particular immediate early gene activated during learning specifically impair uh, long-term memory. Using these uh, data, we came uh, with the suggestion that uh, there are two types of events which can be observed in the nervous system uh, of uh, an animal. One is classical membrane action potentials which communicate signals between the cells. But in parallel with them, in a certain conditions of learning, 
there are also genomic action potentials as they were uh, later called, uh, which are necessary as consolidation signals. And if to look in the dynamic of behavior during acquisition, uh, it appears that though particular neurons are active uh, during different stages of acquisition and recall, it is only during uh, initial sessions of learning this is an old diagram from 80s where uh, genomic action potentials uh, are uh, evident, which allows to isolate among all the activity of neurons in the uh, living brain, the population of neurons which respond to particular experience and using different techniques to uh, reveal the expression of immediate early genes uh, use this to map uh, the engram cells and the whole engram at the cellular level uh, in the nervous system, which gives an empirical approach to study the uh, learning and memory at the cellular level, at the level of the whole brain. certain advantages uh, comparable to other techniques uh, to uh, use them to identify uh, the engram cells. First, <clears throat> they occur only in neurons. Induction is rapid uh, at the time of learning. There is a very low background activity of these genes. They are inducible by uh, activity of neurons and learning. Uh, it is rather universal and this Bipping of uh, brain activity. So, for example, in the 90s, we used this approach to map various types of uh, learning in various uh, animals. Here, just an ex as an example, uh, we show the 3D reconstruction uh, of the chicken brain during the classical strong learning uh, in the uh, post-hatching period, imprinting to the uh, view of the parent uh, in the newborn chicks. It can be seen that uh, from this uh, mapping, there is a broad activity uh, of uh, the genes involved in a storage of a single uh, episode of experience. In order to develop uh, 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 advanced techniques of whole mound detection of immediate early gene expression by using whole mound immunohistochemistry, which allows to stain either initially we did these four individual brain regions like hippocampus or whole cortex uh, without, uh, without destroying it. Optical clearing of uh, these uh, brain samples. Here, uh, the same brain is shown before clearing and after clearing where it lies over the uh, table with the um, uh, term transparent brain. And light sheet fluorescent microscopy, which allows the 3D, 3D uh, imaging uh, of uh, cellular uh, signals in the uh, organ or uh, the whole brain of the animal with cells. It was one of our first uh, results in imaging the whole mouse hippocampus with the <coughs> c force whole mount immunohistochemistry after a single episode of fear condition and individual uh, green labels here are uh, the cells which were activated by this experience in the mouse brain. It is possible uh, even to use the whole brain immunocytochemistry. And here is the whole mouse brain, uh, which was stained with the whole mount immunohistochemistry uh, for ZIF268, another uh, immediate early gene and imaged with the light sheet microscopy. These neurons are the neurons which uh, are activated in the brain 
uh, during uh, single trial fear conditioning. More recently, we uh, uh, advanced and developed this techniques so that they allow uh, a clear cut uh, whole brain mouse imaging uh, in the optically cleared uh, mice, uh, allowing to discriminate. Here is the zoomed example of the whole mouse brain, uh, uh, individual cells, and uh, even uh, their uh, neurites, uh, both uh, dendrites and uh, axons. This is done uh, for uh, transgenic mice with the uh, GFP uh, expressed under THY promoter, but this can be done also, as I will describe uh, further, uh, using the optogenetic uh, technologies uh, by labeling uh, the cells by activity of uh, immediate early genes during memory and acquisition. So <clears throat> this set of uh, approaches and techniques uh, allowed to introduce the uh, approach of immediate early genes as text for labeling, but really a new era of uh, this research uh, emerged uh, with the development of uh, genetic manipulations and optogenetic uh, technologies, where immediate early genes were used as promoters to draw genetic uh, tools, both for ex vivo and in vivo imaging, and also for in vivo manipulation of engram cells in the living brain. I will uh, describe only two uh, uh, type of experiments which we were doing uh, as an example of such optical interrogation of neurons in the uh, brain of uh, animals during learning. The first one uh, used and uses uh, transgenic mice. They were developed by Alison Bath, but there are uh, now other strains of mice. Uh, where uh, CFOS promoter uh, is introduced transgenically with a construct uh, where uh, enhanced gene fluorescent protein is driven by activation of CFOS, which leads to a situation when uh, animal uh, during learning or other uh, type of activity which uh, can drive expression of CFOS in their cells also expressed uh, uh, gene fluorescent protein, which can be detected uh, then in vivo. And here is the design and experiment which was uh, carried by uh, Anna Gruzdiva and uh, other uh, uh, collaborators in uh, our laboratory, where uh, we used uh, two photon imaging in the uh, EGFP uh, CFOS driven uh, transgenic uh, mice, uh, where the mice were subjected to uh, auditory uh, uh, learning in fear conditioning task, and then to uh, repeated episodes of uh, memory uh, for the Q, which was uh, used in a different context. So uh, contextual uh, information was uh, different. Uh, you can see here that uh, it is possible to identify neurons uh, which express uh, force GFP in the uh, cortex, uh, in this case, parietal associative cortex uh, in uh, <clears throat> uh, transgenic mice. Uh, it is possible to uh, see the neurons, which, uh, for example, here in green, which were uh, activated uh, as a result of learning, which were absent uh, in their activity, which were not active by force expression before learning. And it is possible <coughs> returning later on 
uh, a day later or several days later during repeating uh, testing to identify neurons which were uh, active like this neuron uh, only uh, during retrieval uh, comparable to uh, absence of activity before learning or during learning. And comparison of these uh, populations of cells in the cerebral cortex allows to ask the questions, how many cells are activated uh, uh, by immediate early gene uh, traps, markers, tags uh, during learning? And what is the dynamic of involvement of uh, these neurons in the repeated episodes of uh, retrieval uh, of the memory or additional learning. <coughs> the second uh, approach <coughs> which we took um, uh, for um, trapping and tagging uh, the neurons of engram uh, by immediate early genes is based on the use of uh, immediate early gene promoter to drive uh, gray recombinase expression. Gray recombinase is uh, able uh, to influence uh, the, uh, in the transgenic mice, B transgenic mice, to uh, influence uh, the, uh, when it is expressed, to influence the genome of these neurons by removing the stop codons uh, from another construct where uh, uh, the uh, fluorescent process, protein, in this case uh, TD tomato, is inserted. While uh, there is no activity of Cray recombinase, uh, this protein is uh, prevented from expression by stop codons. Cray recombinase, which appears by activation through immediate early gene in the neuron, uh, is able to uh, re-engineer the uh, genetic uh, part uh, of this uh, construct uh, to uh, induce permanent expression uh, of uh, the uh, construct under the control. <clears throat> In fact, it allows not only to use uh, the markers uh, to study the processes of allocation. For example, here, uh, the animal is exposed with the uh, novel experience. Uh, at this time, uh, we inject tamoxifen in order to allow uh, uh, the uh, experience. And then we can study where the neurons uh, which were involved in these uh, novel experience are located uh, in the brain, doing the whole brain mapping and brain-wide characterization of engram cells. But uh, also it is possible to study uh, the activity of these neurons. If instead of uh, GEP, uh, we will insert uh, under the promoter uh, 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 restricted by stop uh, codons, uh, one of genetically encoded uh, fluorescent uh, calcium uh, uh, like GCAMP uh, uh, indicators. And finally, it is possible also to uh, manipulate the cells if uh, instead of uh, uh, simply using the marker, which can be uh, used actually in any of these cases, we uh, will drive by the query combination activation of uh, one of the channel rhodopsin or archaeorhodopsins, which are able to activate or inhibit these neurons. So this gives uh, a set of tools to specifically label, map, image the activity and uh, causally manipulate engram cells uh, in the animal brain. <coughs> Mm, 
this uh, trapping approach uh, has both uh, advantages and uh, limitations comparable to other uh, genetic uh, trapping techniques and tagging techniques uh, it allows the distributed uh, mapping uh, comparable for example to injection of uh, genetic construct uh, in the particular brain area to produce this type of manipulations however uh, it might be not total though this is a knock-in construct uh, it might not 100% uh, represent the activity of all uh, endogenous c uh, uh, induced uh, neurons. The trap occurs over uh, 12 or more uh, hours. Uh, it has better temporal resolution than the TAC techniques which are used also with immediate early genes but it has lower temporal resolution than uh, immune uh, gistochemistry with immediate early genes. And it requires three days to be expressed. That means that uh, uh, the proteins, uh, either uh, fluorescent proteins or uh, uh, GCAMP or channel rhod rhodopsin will accumulate over three days. However, they can stay uh, for the whole uh, life of the animal, which allows a very long-term uh, studies of these uh, neurons. So here are some examples of <coughs> uh, the results which we obtain uh, with this approach. Here, for example, we were interested in the question what type of neurons are uh, activated and plastic during uh, experience acquisition uh, using uh, CFOS uh, trapping technique uh, to uh, identify neurons uh, that were active during this episode. And immunocytochemistry here uh, for CAM kinase 2 type of neurons to see uh, which neurons are uh, uh, belonging to CAM kinase come kind of to uh, excitatory neurons. The same can be done for another type of neurons, uh, both in the cerebral cortex in, and hippocampus. Uh, y or uh, somatostatin uh, neurons which uh, in combination allows an extensive characterization of type of neurons which are involved in acquisition of memory and making the kind of a catalog and classification of these neurons in the different brain areas of the learning uh, animal. Besides that, it is possible to use uh, this approach in combination with the mapping uh, of the expression of the endogenous immediate early genes to compare two episodes. One uh, where the uh, cells of the engram, engram cells are uh, tagged and labeled by, with the genetic uh, trapping. Uh, to a, a long time, many days, it is possible to induce a second experience. Uh, for example, uh, repeated presentation or uh, uh, recall of uh, the uh, previous experience and to label the activity of the neurons in the brain of the same animal using conventional uh, CFOS immuno uh, histochemistry. Uh, and to compare these populations. And here you can see uh, for strapping uh, with the, uh, um, combined with the immunohistochemistry in the neocortex hippocampus and the amygdala of mines, uh, which uh, and home cage uh, uh, with
with the red neurons. So compare, comparing two episodes. Example of uh, such uh, labeling uh, with the GFP using, used for trapping and CFOS used for uh, immunocytochemistry for two episodes. And you can see that it is possible to identify neurons which were uh, active during one episode, second episode, and whether they are repeatedly involved in one and the second episode. Another possibility, as uh, I mentioned, uh, is to use GCAMP uh, in addition to uh, fluorescent protein in order to introduce in the uh, engram cells, in the neurons which were activated during a learning episode, a genetically encoded calcium sensor in order to study them later. Uh, here is an example of uh, this uh, approach where we uh, used uh, two photon imaging. Uh, we uh, conditioned animals uh, in a fear conditioning uh, task uh, under uh, tamoxifen, which allows genetic trapping and then uh, later on uh, use these uh, animals for imaging because in this case we have GCOMP introduced under uh, the trap. This uh, photo shows the uh, cells which were uh, uh, active during uh, acquisition in the uh, parietal cortex and they are labeled by uh, both GFP and uh, also uh, contain uh, uh, GCAM. You can see that accumulation of these uh, cells after uh, a single uh, episode of learning takes uh, about two, three days. And uh, here is the distribution of these uh, CAMP positive neurons in the cerebral cortex uh, of the trained uh, mice. Here is the example of the calcium traces which are recorded from such uh, uh, tagged uh, engram cell uh, after uh, three days or uh, following the experience. So uh, <coughs> coming to uh, conclusions and uh, future directions. First, uh, I tried to show that uh, with the uh, approaches using uh, genetic manipulations with immediate early genes and uh, their uh, optogenetic uh, um, association, it is possible to start uh, addressing the questions. How learning and memory encoding is associated, for example, with excitatory and inhibitory neurons in hippocampus, cerebral cortex, and uh, other brain neurons? Uh, brain areas. How learning and memory encoding is associated with the different types of uh, cells uh, present uh, in these uh, areas. Do neurons always learn uh, during retrieval and what are the conditions? How this process is distributed among neurons that were involved in the first episode, memory encoding, and uh, second episode? Uh, are uh, the processes of memory retrieval uh, more involved uh, the existing neurons which were uh, initially implicated in learning or new neurons? And what is the distribution and percentage of this distribution among different brain uh, areas? Uh, as a conclusion, I would uh, uh, like to present a future direction uh, exemplified by a recent uh, study uh, uh, still in the preprint on the bioarchive uh, by uh, the group uh, from the laboratory of Susuma Tenegawa. It uh, demonstrates that uh, uh, using CFOS allows us to uh, start studying uh, exactly and experimentally uh, the qualitative uh, issues of the global brain neuronal engrams uh, using the cellular 
molecular level and optogenetics. What they did uh, in this uh, uh, study is that they used uh, the uh, mice uh, which were uh, expressing uh, C4 uh, with the credit companies in a trap technology to uh, characterize uh, the activity uh, of uh, 409 brain uh, neurons using the optical clear uh, technology of whole brain imaging of these mice after the creative combination and expression of the fluorescent marker uh, in the episode of learning. Uh, they then uh, did uh, a second mapping as we did uh, in the previous slides using c immunocytochemistry and they developed uh, an n-gram index which uh, is the uh, difference between the number of neurons in a particular brain area involved in the uh, memory encoding and number of neurons involved in memory retrieval. And uh, they characterized all these 400 brain regions using this index. They uh, then uh, selected the regions with a high index. And here where it comes the optogenetic and hemogenetic uh, manipulations. They, uh, after making this map, they uh, made optogenetic uh, activation of the areas with the highest brain uh, engram index and showed that uh, manipulation of uh, particularly these uh, um, areas by activating C4s first is able to activate the whole engram uh, that means to activate all other labeled cells uh, which were involved in memory acquisition. It's uh, to uh, affect the behavior by uh, producing the fear response in uh, animals without uh, actual uh, fear condition stimulus. And third, uh, they use uh, uh, gamma genetic approaches uh, using uh, dread manipulation also to introduce uh, the mm, uh, dread uh, molecules into the cells under c promoter in the areas of the high engram index. And to show that uh, such genetic activation, especially when using combined uh, uh, introduction into a set of brain areas with a high uh, engram index, produces the strong uh, activation of the behavior uh, acquired during uh, conditioning by just genetic uh, manipulation, which fulfills then the criteria of engram cells in terms that these are the cells which are involved in activation during memory acquisition and that uh, their uh, further uh, activation by optogenetic and Chemogenetic techniques, a neuronal ensemble uh, involved in memory, and also to produce the corresponding uh, behavior. <coughs> so the experiments which I described uh, in uh, my talk were uh, performed by. Uh, Olga Ivashkina, Ksenia Toropova, Anna Gruzdeva, and Natalia Vorobyova. And the trap uh, technique, which uh, I showed uh, here, was developed uh, under the uh, Russian Science Foundation uh, project and supported uh, by it. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, please. Okay, so we are back despite of some technical problems. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, I'm sure that was so exciting presentation, so should be more many raised hands. So please raise your hands. Okay. Uh, mm. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Да, yes. Окей, thank you very much, Константин, for the so very interesting presentation of Donald that one. So, so uh, my question is about uh, is about the geography of the sea force expression. If you have the different type of the fair, just test whether it gives a different different geography of the expression of the sea force. Yes, it does. And it was very interesting just to show that you said that, that the calcium rise is a maximum is about the, the neuron. Fair condition, and this time needs the three days actually for the for the for the long term development of the fair. No, uh, uh, the point was different. Uh, you see, uh, when we induce uh, C force uh, in this transgenic mice during the episode uh, of uh, fear acquisition at time zero. These neurons start to express crater combinase. I didn't show you uh, the slide, but in order for crater combinase even to be expressed and to accumulate, it requires several hours. But then this crater combinase has to start working in the genome of these cells by removing stop codon and accumulating uh, the proteins which are now released uh, and the genes to be expressed. And in order to have sufficient amount of either the fluorescent protein as a genetic tag or uh, GCAM or channel rhodopsin after such episode, uh, it, requ it requires, I showed the graph, about two, three days. So yeah. at three days, there is enough GCAM sensor uh, in the neurons which were uh, involved in learning three days before to start recording. We cannot start recording earlier because there is not enough sensor. So three days means this um, blind period between the uh, learning episode and the time when we can start mapping uh, these uh, circuits or um, uh, recording the activity uh, of these engram neurons. Okay. Maybe this is so on. Oh, okay. Yes, sorry. Pietro. Mm -hmm. Can I ask one more? Yeah. Actually, just a yes. This is about uh, the, the raw paper which you gives actually what type the, of the, the chemogenetic mm, uh, uh, approaches has been used because it should be some specific protein activation, some specific pathway, G protein pathway. They used uh, C4's TTA uh, along with the dread receptors of, uh, in the TET tag system, where they uh, injected both uh, of these constructs in the cannula in the areas which were identified as a strong engram index areas by the previous mapping. And then they uh, just uh, use the chemogenetic mice systemically, but the uh, dread receptors were expressed in this uh, set of the brain areas. And uh, they showed that it is possible to do this uh, and to produce the fear behavior just by injecting an area like dentigerus, which has been shown before. But they show if you combine injection in the um, collection uh, of uh, engram uh, areas, the behavior is reproduced uh, much more stronger. Mm -hmm. Uh, which they use as an argument uh, for the uh, suggestion that different in the different learning conditions. 
Thank you. Another question. How do you distinguish between neurons activated during the experimental learning session and those that could be activated during the following three days? Uh, we uh, use the uh, tamoxifen injection, uh, actually hydroxytamoxifen, which gives a rather short uh, time window of about six hours when the uh, activation of CFOS can uh, produce expression of Cray recombinase. Cray recombinase uh, has uh, also in uh, Cray recombinase gene has also uh, an estrogen receptor uh, gene in this construct. And only when uh, there is an activation of estrogen receptor and activation of CFOS promoter, Cray recombinase will be expressed in the neurons. So without injection of tamoxifen, which lasts for several hours, uh, any activity of CFOS, let's say uh, several hours after learning or a day after learning or a week after learning or anywhere in the life of animal, will uh, the cells and uh, label them uh, through trap technique. So uh, uh, we are selectively viewing the cells which were active uh, around several hours several hours around the episode of uh, memory acquisition, only those. Thanks. So, Evgenia Pushina, please, you have your hand. I turn your sound on. Okay. Um, yes, you can now say. Uh, I cannot hear, sorry. Yes, me either. Evgenia Pushina, please. Yeah, you raise your hand. Okay, maybe we lost connection. Uh, are there any others uh, who would like to ask? Professor okay, if not, <laughs> we can applaud. You know, we have uh, some special button with virtual applause. It's called reaction. Uh, we have an, a like question uh, from chat one. Okay, so please uh, uh, read the Thank question. you. Could we use this approach to control uh, of the learning and memory processes in coding or retrieval? Uh, could we manipulate of these processes independently? Definitely, yes. Uh, but only once. Uh, I mean the following. You can uh, introduce uh, the optogenetic uh, actuators or uh, inhibitors either during uh, memory acquisition in one mouse or during uh, memory reactivation. And depending on when you did this, you will uh, control the circuit uh, of neurons, which was uh, implicated in memory encoding or memory acquisition. You cannot do this so far. Mm, I cannot figure out how to do this. Um, uh, animal, you can do it in different groups of animals. With one, you control uh, neurons for acquisition and in other group you control neurons for memory recall. Okay, I am uh, satisfied. Uh, okay, so shall we proceed with um, questions, but I don't see any raised hands anymore. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, dear friends,